Hello and welcome to this week's painting project. If you have already watched my previous videos, you would know that we use the M3 method of painting which simplifies things even for beginners. And if you are new here, let me explain what this M3 method of painting is in one or two sentences and then we can get back to project. The M3 method of painting involves three steps. The first one is composition where we use reference photographs and compose a picture. The second step involves the blocking of basic colors and the third step involves adding just right amount of details so that we can call the painting as complete. We also use just three colors and two or maximum three brushes to complete the whole painting. So this way the things are kept very simple so that even beginners and intermediate level artists can use this method and get great results. And again the bushes here on this side of the road, there will be something here which is just to point the viewers attention towards this. So this is the focal point, there will be shadow here, there will be some shadow here also and this tree will be, this part of the tree will be in shadow. There will be some areas of shadow and light here and there will be some bushes here towards the base of the mountain and there will be this area which is uh, going to suggest some field, a farm or something like that. So it is basically a very simple composition again. So this is the end result of the first step of M3 method which is the composition. So welcome to the step number 2 of this painting project. I am going to use watercolors in the fashion of gouache colors which means I will be adding white to the colors and applying them on the paper. So this is a 150 or 140 GSM paper, I have taped the all the corners, all, all the sides so that I, it can give me a clean edge when I finish the painting. So I am using just three colors and white. This is ultramarine blue, this is chrome yellow, this is burnt sienna and this is titanium white or Chinese white. All these are watercolors and since I am going to use uh, these colors in the fashion of gouache which means applying thick paint and adding white wherever necessary. I am going to use a glass palette, otherwise if it was a transparent watercolor painting, I would have used a palette with the wells which is typical of any watercolor uh, artist. Uh, but I am going to use a glass palette this time. And we are going to use just two brushes. This one is a flat brush number 12 and this one is a small rigger kind of brush size number 6. So I am going to take some ultramarine blue, add a lot of water to it because at the stage of drawing I need the outlines to be very light and I am going to have the light coming in from here somewhere so that this part of the tree, this part will be lighter and this will be darker and hence and simi on the similar lines this part of the sky will be darker than this. So there will be slight gradation from here to here. So now let's go on and start with the background. I'm going to have this ultramarine and white added to it. And let's see how blue this is and let's test on this side. It can be slightly more blue. As I go towards this side, I will add more and more white to it. And as we come towards the bottom of the 
towards the horizon this blue color has to be lighter hence i'm adding more white to it and similar white i'll carry towards this side i'm adding water just to make this paint flow let me have some of that color here also if we may not use it in the in the final painting but let me at least cover it right now and now let's come to the foreground color let me wash the brush and the foreground will be a light green color so let's mix a light green color again i am here adding some white to it and let's test this yes looks good so let me apply this over this whole area and i'm going to apply this slightly thinner here and i don't want a hard edge here so i'm just running my finger over the edge so which makes the edge less sharp as i come towards the bottom of the painting i'm going to add some more blue to it so that it becomes darker now let me add color to these bushes so this is the second last area of darkest color again i'm mixing blue and brown and some white to give it opacity so let me apply this color just to suggest some bushes i don't want this edge to be sharp maybe there are these are some small trees or dried bushes or something like that now let's add dark color to the big tree again i'm at this stage i'm adding or applying very dark color and as we said the dark, darks will be on this side more and this will be a lighter part of the tree so i'm going to start from here let me cover this up right now if required i'll cut through this color later on in painting you need to adjust colors depending on what surrounds it so there is no absolute color or absolutely correct color when you mix it on the palette only after you apply it on the on the paper or canvas you actually know whether it's right or wrong and most of the time it needs some kind of adjustment later on
So, this completes the blocking stage. So, I will allow this painting to dry up slightly and I will be back in the next video after about 5 minutes I will start painting the next step which is the detailed step. So, see you in that lecture. Welcome back to this stage of painting which is the third stage. This paint has dried and I am going to add details to this painting now. So, in this stage we will be going one shape after the other and add details. So, what I want to do first is add some darks here towards the base of these trees. So, let me grab some dark blue and let's test this. This looks good. And I'm using a dryer brush. So, I just wiped extra paint off my brush and I'm making the bottom part of these trees slightly darker. Yeah, this looks good. Might add some color here. But I want to keep this area darker. I am adding this lighter color, color here because I want to show the shadow dark. So, that contrast kind of adds to the darkness. Now, let us add maybe a touch of darker blue to the mountain, but I will not add it all over, maybe a line which suggests a a ridge. So, I want this color to be thin. Some this is a kind of highlight for the mountain because there is some white added to it, but I do not want to go overboard and suggest a lot of details in it. So, I will leave it at that. Now, let me come to this tree and I want to slightly darken it up towards the bottom. some blue and some brown. And this looks too uniform or too singular. So, I'll, let me add something here, which might be another bush just behind this tree, just to make it non symmetric. And I can use this same dark color here. I will just suggest darker foliage here. See how loosely I am using the brush. 
that gives or that naturally adds randomness to the strokes which is what we want in landscape paintings like this. Thing enough. I don't want to add them in too many places. Only thing remains is I need to paint their shadow also. Otherwise, they will not look real. And I might want to add some lighter brown on the road just to highlight it at some places. So I'll use this very light brown color, burnt sienna. And let's see how this looks. It needs to be still lighter. Only at some places. This will anyway become more transparent as it dries up. But I think I don't need to add anything more. Let's see. This vast expanse of the sky looks a bit boring because of... Because there are no clouds in it. So... I want to add some clouds in it with white color, but I don't want to overdo them. Otherwise, they'll shift attention from the rest of the thing here. Let's see how this looks. This is too, too dull. Yeah, this looks okay. And I can add lighter or make it lighter towards the horizon, which will even make these trees even more stark, which is a good thing for me. And I think I'll stop at this point. So, to summarize, what we did is we first made this composition based on the two photographs which I showed. Then I drew that on this piece of paper with light blue color. And then in the next step, we added the basic colors of these, all the shapes. And in the final stage, we added details to all the shapes and pull together the painting. So I think it's time to remove the tape and let's see how the final painting looks. While removing the tape you need to be careful that you don't peel off any layer of the paper which happens sometimes which like it's happening right now. But for that reason, you have to pull the tape away from the painting so that even if it damages or peels off some layer, it doesn't peel off the painting layer. Now let's try this.
and that's it. I hope you like this painting and the demo and I'm attaching the reference photographs with this lecture so that you can use that and compose your own paintings and then paint with whatever colors you choose. This method of painting will remain same even if you use oils or acrylics or even watercolor in the gouache style. So I hope to see you in the next video. Happy painting!